home edition. Look, I even put up the sign. I put up the sign. There you go. There you go. Someone made us that sign. A vendor made us that sign. And and you know what? Katrina brought it over. Uh, uh, one of our marketing managers brought it over and sat it down next to me and said, look, I got you a gift. And she plugged it in and the light turned on. And I was like, yeah, that's great. I love it. Well, I didn't know what I was going to use it for. Yeah. Now we know. Now you know. It's right there. <laughs> it's so, right. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are in that boat where they're using things that they might have not thought that they would ever be using right now. You think so? Reaching for stuff in the pantry that you you didn't thought know was there. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Tell me, you look back kind of like you like sort of pry away those things. You go, the half eaten jar of pickles in the back. <laughs> All right, looking pretty good right now. <laughs> You've been passed over for the last couple of months, but now <laughs> yeah, I can do something out of that. I, have, I hope things haven't gotten that that uh, dire over where you're at. But uh where are you, Andy? Because Jay and I look like we're in, in oh. bedrooms, but you look like you're in some sort of a loft. Uh, this is the old barn. This is my house shop. You guys, um, I think a lot. You guys have been here, so you see, you've seen some of what this looks like. That's um, I've got the my telephone, which is a better camera than the telephone. Um, whatever, I got it propped up against one of the hand planes sitting on my workbench, so you kind of see the old roof of there. Which I'm glad it's not leaking right now because it's it's been raining here quite a bit more than I would expect for this time of year. This, uh, this I'm happy to have a dry workshop. roof, so that's pretty good. This is the workshop that you you bought and, uh, and you restored, and now you you build guitars in it. Is that correct? Yeah, it's it's kind of what we refer to as Taylor North County, <laughs> okay. Taylor North County edition. This is the, um, I mean, I use it like a development lab. So right. not everything at the Taylor facility is really modern, real high tech. And every one of those tools is very purpose-built. And so this is the flip side of what that looks like, where everything is antiquated. I've got a bunch of hand tools up here. It's just kind of a creative space where when I have ideas, I can go make them and try stuff to see what's going what's gonna to come out. So the last couple of years, the, all the guitars that we've been building, these new designs that we're bringing up, they've all started here in this old building. Do you want to give us a quick tour? Is there a way to pan the camera? Yeah, real fast? yeah. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, probably best not to cover that uh, lens. So, <laughs> yeah, it used to be an old barn. Let's see now. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll kind of do a little panorama kind it's of a thing. Camera. That we, old. We also call that, that old band saw. We also call that our video studio. <laughs> oh God! You so it's kind of a collection of old machines that I've restored over years. Kind of some personal favorites. Lots of folks. Uh, that's Bridget. That's one of the the more recent additions. Bridget. Everybody is... needs a bridge board in their uh, in their garage. Of course. And you know, lots of folks have seen what that looks like. Lots of chisels. Sweet mother of chisel. Oh, lots right. of them. They all have a reason for existing. Is that a shop back there? Uh, that old thing, that's a dust collector. It was a Christmas present from my parents when I was maybe 14 or 15. And I think it was more of a um, more of a recommendation than a gift. <laughs> that's cool. It was kind of a way, it was their way to encourage me in uh, the ways of cleanliness and in a workshop bring environment. The, stop bringing the, so the dust into you know, the dinner table <laughs> well i mean i come from a family of makers right my dad's a carpenter my mom's a ceramicist and flower arranger my brother and sister all are doing stuff we all make stuff we all make messes so i was probably the dustiest one of all of us so you know at the time it was it was it was some encouragement to say that's one hey, of my, you know, the thing's still holding up. It still works pretty good. That's one of my favorite things about it. Filming Andy sometimes when we film him at, at yeah, when we are at headquarters, right? In El Cajon. I'll have a schedule. 
to film Andy and he'll come in and he's just filthy. It's great. Sorry. I just knocked it over. That blade is really sharp. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. I know which end to touch. So this is your workshop, but then you're, you have the same, your house is just uh, a walk, walk out the door. So you got your family over there and uh, yep. staying pretty, pretty busy then with the kids. Yeah. I mean, really my wife, Martin is, she's the angel. She's, amazing in every possible way and she takes everything in stride i mean she puts up with me you know it's she's pretty incredible and so she's been taking this all in stride they've been home here for oh gosh like a good solid month now oh, and wow. she invents things for them to do and they're trying all kinds of stuff and a lot of piano playing going on which is kind of cool because our our uh, older two kids, we have three, and uh, our older two have been taking some lessons, and our oldest son has decided that with this time he wants to learn to read and write music. So that's kind of fun. It's yeah. fun to really watch him get into you know learning how to draw G clefs and that's you know cool. kind of work that work a staff pretty well. And so they've been doing that. They've been learning to speak Spanish. So they've been practicing some of that. You know, a lot of trips around the neighborhood, <laughs> walking, running, riding bikes, you know, keep keep a little distance between them, that kind of thing. That's good. I got my, my daughter. But all the gardens are completely weed free. There's been so many weeds pulled, it's unbelievable. The yards have never looked better. So that's pretty it's kind of a nice side effect. Some optimism there. Yeah, my daughter finally uh, picked up the guitar just on her own. And uh, I said, sure, I'll sign you up for video lessons. And, and she's been doing it from day three That's now. Awesome. Um, That's super cool. A friend of mine actually uh, got uh, got their daughter a uke this last weekend. Because she had, uh, they had seen a, a movie that came out on one of the, the, like the Disney TV shows or Disney movie platforms or something and the uh i guess the, the protagonist in this movie was playing a uke a lot thought it was really cool so they got a uke we went all right we're gonna make some make some use of this time that way that's great that's so, awesome. you know, some people are finding some creative things to do with the, with the time if my uh my youngest um uh, my seven-year-old plays drums and um usually goes to drum oh line. that's fun yeah <laughs> so what it's done though is is you know, Cameron and I were, we were thinking about when we were doing this podcast, what, what are we going to talk about? And kind of like, you know, what are we all doing to keep time? What are we doing with our kids? And we're working from home and we're working probably more now than we do when we're at work. I mean, it's crazy, but <laughs> I've been making a point to take a couple yeah. of days a, a week and I'll take an hour and I'll do drum lessons with my daughter, which is now making... Yeah. You know, like teaching her a paradiddle yesterday was like the greatest achievement. It was so great. I mean, she hasn't learned that yet. And yesterday she was it's doing, pretty wild, right? She got it and she was just ec just ecstatic. I did it. I did it. I did it. Floating with joy. To see Jay in week, week four, fourth week straight of paradiddles. I'm, I'm interested to see how you're going to turn out. Yeah. <laughs> <a great> <laughs> so I can just tell you. Oh, let's talk shop. Yeah, it's, quick. Um, yeah. Let, you know, Taylor Guitars, we're, we're, we're adapting. Everybody's adapting to what's going on. Um, Andy, uh, yeah. what's, what's your day? How, how's your day to day changed? What, what are you doing now that you're home as opposed to what you would be normally doing in the factory these days? You know, it's, it's a bit different because with the factory, so eerily quiet, it, in some ways, it allows you some more space to think about things and come up with some pretty creative ideas of what you want to try next. But at the same time, you stew in that too long and you, know, you get a little too far out there. Right. So you got to be you got to be careful to um, come up for air once in a while. I mean, I in some ways, a lot of ways, we're real fortunate because I do quite a bit of our development work here at my house shop anyway. And so I've been working on a lot of things 
that uh, that I'd been put on putting on the back burner, going, ah, I need I need a couple of uninterrupted days to do this, and I need to work on that. I had this idea, but I don't know if it'll quite work yet. So I've been working through some of those ideas. I know Bob is doing the same thing. So we're we're kind of um, got a camera on each other all day long these days. Oh, well, okay, well you're in your shop, I'm in mine. What are you working on? What am I? Here's what I'm working on. So we're both <laughs> kind of doing things around to uh, to see what we can work on next. Because you know, most of the time, daily life is falls into such a strict pattern of busyness. It's like the tyranny of the now. You know, it's that demanding next five minutes and you spend our entire day living in five minute chunks. And so even though I don't welcome what uh, what's going on right now, having the ability to just think deeply about what's in front of you for hours on end and work on one idea versus another and really make some forward progress on that there's there's some value in that as well. So, you know, it's not the, not the life that we would have chosen at the moment, but we're doing our best to make the most of it. Well, it's great. I'm glad that to, glad to know that the the pilot light is on, so to speak, in the development department. Yeah, we're actually, well, burning pretty hot over there, and maybe maybe pilot lights on over the factory. <laughs> yeah, I might have gotten turned up a little bit more in the last couple of weeks because, man, there's just there's a lot of stuff that does not exist that could exist that we think should exist. And so we're, we're chomping at the bit rare to go with, with what's coming next. Oh yeah. Because we're, we're not going to, we're excited to get back to work. We're yeah. Not gonna make cars, are we? <laughs> no, maybe not yet. <laughs> Although I have been, I have been working on the truck a little bit. So, oh, nice. you know, there's some of that. So well, what? I got some time. I might as well change out those bushings. And you know, I've been contemplating swapping a transmission in the truck to a different style. So I have to kind of engineer how those are, those pieces are going to go together because they they're not meant to go together the way I want to put it together. Well, now so, that the lead is done, you can get to it. So, yeah. Um, what about just the factory in general? Then you know I know you're developing. But I know you're also, you know, part of the leadership team here at Taylor, and we've had mm-hmm. the leadership team has just kind of gone into this uh, mode where they're meeting daily, they're making decisions, they're listening to what's going on, mm-hmm. figuring out how that how that relates to the employees. How do we keep Taylor moving forward in this, you know, limbo? What, uh, how have things been with you and Bob and Kurt as, you know, owners of Taylor? How have you guys been, uh, you know, making those decisions and communicating? Like I said, it's not something that we would have welcomed because no one wants to be in the position that we're in. But that said, difficult times tend to be when Taylor does best. Yeah. Because we are still an upstart. We're scrappy. Well, we're, we know how to get down and, and work through difficult times. I mean, Bob and Kurt will both tell you they picked possibly the worst era to enter into the acoustic guitar industry. And that ended up being a blessing in disguise because at the time they entered the industry, nobody wanted acoustic guitars. So it didn't really matter whether they were doing poorly because because they were doing a bad job or doing poorly because the entire industry was in an acoustic guitar slump. Everybody, the tide was really low for everybody, so to speak. And so as, that, as the acoustic guitar came back into real popular usage, it sort of, the tide came in and floated everybody's boat pretty equally. And so we tend to use these times even though we've never seen a time quite like this, we tend to use difficult times as a way to step back, focus on our work, and try to make some strides forward. So what can we do better? What can we, what new things should we be making that we don't already? How can we do a better job of what we already do? 
you know, what things can we put in place to be of better service to musicians on the flip side of this event? So we've been, we have been meeting daily and talking through those because, man, the news headlines and the plans that you make one day might not fit the next day. So it certainly has been a real challenge to try and figure out because we want to do a really good job taking care of everybody. And that's really hard to do right now. And Taylor's a multinational company. It's, it's you know, across the globe between Mexico and Amsterdam and, and West Africa. Uh, and what's crazy about what's going on is, you know, the fact that it's a global uh, issue and, and everybody, no matter if you're across the pond or not, in another country, going through the same things, but there are slight changes to the different way we do business in, in those different countries. It, so I imagine that's a lot to navigate. That's a really good point because you're right. It's tough in that we do operate across a lot of different places. One of the interesting dynamics right now is between El Cajon and Tecate. I mean, we have two factories. Right. And one, one of them is in the U.S. and one of them is in Mexico. They're only about an hour drive apart. So they're essentially in the, they're almost in the same city. You know, it, you can drive to Tecate quicker than you can drive across L.A. on an average day. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So they're very close. And yet, because there is an international border between them, the regulations and the way that this is being handled is somewhat different. So there's a lot of nuance and a lot of very dynamic type kind of changes that are happening hourly all along that region. And then you, on the flip side, you look at, okay, well, in Amsterdam, where we have our European headquarters and repair and distribution facility, well, that's a whole different story again. They're faced with a different set of challenges and a different set of kind of measures to help combat this. Then you could look all the way upstream and say, okay, well, what about some of the wood supplies that we're bringing in? Well, earlier today, Bob and I were talking about mahogany. We're talking about it with our wood purchasing team and kind of strategizing about, well, how do, what are we going to do? Because like for mahogany, in certain parts of the world, there's only one time a year that you can cut because you can't do any cutting during the rainy season. Right. So, so they do their entire year's worth of work in like a three to four month window. And that's what you get. But that might be a full year or 18 months out. So we're, you know, kind of uh, talking over phones, scratching our heads going, well, what's the world going to look like in 12 months? What about what what about in 18 months? Because if we want that wood, we need to do it now. But what what will happen? I don't know what'll happen next week. Wow, yeah. So we're we're doing the best we can to make those kinds of decisions. So planning but by it's a real challenge to try and figure out. Planning by the hour and then also planning 18 months out. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's really it's really tricky. It's I mean, when I was, uh, especially when I was younger, I got to spend a lot of time around around guys who were many generations older than I am. You know, there's a lot of old surfer, musician friends, craftsmen, woodworkers, furniture builders who had lived through things like like the Second World War. There was a couple who were in their very, you know, kind of twilight years when I was young, and they'd been through the Great Depression. Yeah, And so I hear these stories as a kid of the type of things that people went through and what they experienced, what they saw. And it was so foreign to my experience. It almost seemed like a different world. And yet those were the times that there was like this forging effect on the people who lived through those times and those experiences that never left them. And even though no one would want to replicate that and endure those hardships again, those experiences were transformative. They, those people were forged for the better. 
from those experiences. So I do think, despite the tragedy that this has amounted to, there has to be some silver lining in this. Yeah. I think there's a there's a great silver lining. I mean, you look at Taylor, not just from what we now can potentially, as you and Bob are thinking, and what can we make that we haven't been able to make? What can we do to that we haven't been able to do? I know on on our side, you know, I look at it from an employee of Taylor Guitars looking at our leadership team, and it's forced us as a, as an entire company to communicate better. We have to communicate. Yeah. That. that wasn't, it, we didn't think that this was going to happen in January or February or even March. Certainly we, not. We had to make something work. Um, if it's technology, if it's the fact that this yeah. is pretty great that we're doing a podcast right now on Zoom. And you know what? It's fun. It's a good time yeah. to break the norm and be able to do this. And yeah, you know what? Endure the, you got your kids hanging out with you at work every day. Oh, that's, Oh man, but cool. It's really cool. I mean, some people have said that necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. And I'm not sure I agree with that. I think invention is the mother of necessity. Oh, all right there. Because you look at all the things that we come to rely on in a modern world. Yeah. Talk about airplane travel. That was not a necessity until it existed, and then it became a necessity. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Something like like this um, this video over a telephone thing. <laughs> None of that was a necessity until it became a necessity. It existed, and darn it, we're going to start using it because that really works well. And so a lot of things like that, they come out of times when you can invent them. It isn't necessarily in response to a need, but if you have the opportunity to be creative and, and inventive, you should make the most of that. Good things can come from that. I do want to touch on one fact that I was, I was a little bit uh, pleasantly surprised to hear that Jay talked you into joining social media. Uh, yeah, that's, that's something new. Usually life is so full of yeah, I mean, you got the weekend chores, you got the Saturday chores, the Sunday chores, the evening chores, and all those other projects that you want to throw in between. And I haven't made time for a lot of that. And um, I don't know, I thought in this time when um, I don't get to see so many of my musician friends and other maker friends and whatnot, maybe it would be fun to share some stories and and uh, things things that I've discovered and of working alone in my workshop. So yeah, I thought that might be kind of cool. So yeah, that sent me a, he sent me a video. And so we, we, we made sure it was good to go. We uploaded it and it's like in no time at all, it's got a thousand views and everyone's really excited about it. It was really interesting. He's just actually does a little, uh, it was, it's clever. I, I suggest everybody who's watching this, listening to this goes and follows Andy. We'll, 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 we'll put his handles out there for everybody, but man, it, it, it'll be fun to get to know you a little bit better on social. That's <laughs> <laughs> Either that or, um, or people just start to discover the depths of the nerdiness and you know, run the <laughs> other way. <laughs> <We're> all, <laughs> what, uh, what's been fun is watching the artists be adapting to this. You know, it's unfortunate that you know, these musicians are, they make their living on the road for the most part in this time of, you know, streaming albums instead of, you know, things like that. But uh, that was taken away. So we've seen a lot of artists turn to live streaming and um, collaboration. Uh, yeah, some of the, virtual one of the fun, concert. Well, yeah, one of the fun ones I've watched has been um, Drew Holcomb and uh, his wife, they're... Um, they're doing a bunch of cover songs from their kitchen, and it's turned to a th into a thing. And every day they're doing a new cover, and it's been so. Oh, that's fun! fun. I haven't I haven't seen that. My friend uh, my friend John Foreman started posting a song every day, and so he they're going through. He's um the the he's got a band called Switchfoot. In fact, that I think uh, I think the feed might have been from their yeah. their uh, website. 
I'm not sure. Anyway, he's been holed up at home and playing a song every day for the last, what, three weeks or four weeks or something like that. You know, and what, you know, it'd be awesome. If it's, John... it's really good fun because that's about as close to what I've seen and heard when we get together and play and let our kids run around. It's like as close to real life as you could possibly get. It, I think it would be super fun. I wish, I don't wish, but I almost wish that his house was actually their studio so that in in the Switchfoot studio, you've been there, Cameron, you've been there a ton, Andy, but you've got this wall and it's just like racks upon racks upon racks upon racks upon racks of guitars. And it would be awesome if he played a different guitar for a different song every day. I mean, he could do it. <laughs> He's got to have north 300 guitars. I mean, it, it's... it's uh, I don't know if they got that many. That's kind of a composite collection. I think I think quite a few of those are Drews, actually. <laughs> That's fair, but still, there. I mean, Switchfoot could get together and play all There's the... a lot of options. Woo. It is a collection for days. I wouldn't be sad if yeah. I had it. Andy, are you... Uh, I, you know, I know your kids are taking... doing a lot of practice with piano. How about you? Are you able to... Uh, you know, to uh, blow off some steam with uh, instruments and music. Yeah, I've been I've been playing um, this week in particular. The last couple of days have been a little rough because some of the mu- we've lost some of the musicians that meant a lot to me. Not not so much guys that I knew personally. I was just like every other listener. I was just a fortunate recipient of their artwork. You know, I've always loved Bill Withers' music. I don't know if there's a person alive who's not familiar with his songs. Right. I mean, whether whether or not you know his name, you know his music. Right. You know, everybody knows some of his, his call it his greatest hits, but those are like anthems around the world. I mean, and then you have Lean on Me Alone is i mean lean on me alone is like i mean it, that's got to be up there in like your top five well-known song around the world easily and it's still that good every time then, every time i hear it it's the same oh that song is perfect yeah it's that good but uh yesterday john prine that one hit me pretty hard yeah i I never got to play with him. I only rem- I was introduced to his music as a little kid because my my uh, dad in particular really liked his records. And I've got a, a lot of friends who have been a- had the privilege of sharing stages with him and doing some writing and performing and whatnot. And he's he's some that, someone that I wish I could have met in person. But man, I won't ever forget his songs. In fact, one of there was a tune that he did called "Grandpa Was a Carpenter." Yep, it was one of my favorites as a kid. It's still one of my favorite tunes, and it's become a favorite of my own kids. There's just some enduring power in a tune like that. It's 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 uh, just so good, and so it's really um, it feels very eye-opening yeah and very uh it feels like a somber affair to see someone like that be swept away in the midst of all this have you gone through and kind of re-listened to the catalog and, and everything i know a lot of people discover you know the the unfortunate you know when, when some a legend like that passes it's almost like people dig in and then discover new things they hadn't heard before yeah you know oh man i I'd invite everybody to go back and listen to like Sweet Revenge. <laughs> some of those tunes where he went, whoa, this is really cool. This is really good. His catalog is deep and wide. And Andy and I were shortly after we both heard the news, we were texting and um, Andy sit, told me, you know, his favorite song. And I, I, right when you sent the text, I was, we were listening to it and it was, it, I mean, First of all, the lyrics and grammar yeah. are like, I mean, it's perfect. It's, if, if you follow us on social, you saw our quote. I just pulled a quote, a lyrical quote from John Prine. I mean, 
and uh, Cameron and I were lucky. Probably, I mean, it was like really moving. At Americana Fest last year at the awards show, we got to see him perform Angel of Montgomery, Angel from Montgomery. From Montgomery? Anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, at, with Bonnie Raitt. And it was such an amazing pair. I mean, it was like a jaw dropping. Um, just like, nobody's going to walk on the stage after that. <laughs> yeah, they <exactly>. tried. <laughs> they tried, but it was real hard. I mean, yeah. it was a special moment, and man, that was a hard one. Both both Bill Withers and yeah. John Prine. That was that was difficult. Yeah, there's. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the way that things go. I understand it. It's you know, the odds are that at some point everybody departs. It just doesn't it doesn't make it easier for those those of us who watch someone like that be swept away. Yeah. So uh to uh you know wrap things up here, um can you give us any hint as to to what you're working on? Or are we uh we just need to Oh there's all kinds of stuff. <laughs> earlier to earlier today earlier today was flat top steel string guitars okay i'll say that much um and that's nothing new with you right i mean not terribly new <laughs> yesterday was not flat top steel string guitars okay that was different kinds of guitars that's kind of exciting today at the moment i'm playing this i'm playing this old arch top i by old it's I think I built it maybe 20 or so years ago. So some, once in a while, I get the kick to do something like that. Maybe someday. It's still one of my favorite forms of guitar ever. Well, we hope that, uh, we'll we hope that this, this time in isolation and contemplation, oh, uh, you know, break into a few, you have a few epiphanies and uh, moments that, that hopefully will, you know, translate. Oh, we've got some exciting things going. I can I can assure you that. <laughs> I know we're already we're already it's a, with what it's a pretty it's a pretty um, in some ways it's an exciting time because you feel this like for both Bob and I in particular it feels like this almost manic sense of creativity where everything just starts to bubble up because you go oh, well if I've got if I've got an entire week. That means I could, and you list off 20 different things. Go, well, each one of those things is going to take a week. But <laughs> Yeah. But, you That's know, great. We're, you can make the most of the time. We're glad that you're, uh, that you're doing well and you're, you and your family are safe. And uh, we, yep. Jason, um, you know, we're, we're adapting and we're going to hopefully for the podcast, this kind of adapted version of it, uh, we should yeah. have great artists coming up. Uh, we've got other Taylor folks, maybe even um, fan and, and Facebook groups and, and others that are trying to connect over the internet. We're going to somehow figure a way to, uh, to embrace let's that. Let's do it. And uh, let's, uh, let's invent, let's, uh, let's figure these inventions out so we can, uh, we can stay a little more connected because I miss having my musician friends around and, uh, and being around the people, the musicians that, that I love all the, all the players who are, taking these instruments up and playing bedtime songs for their kids, playing songs for themselves in their bedrooms and apartments and places all over this country and the rest of the world. Challenging time. But hey. Music is one of those things that we get to turn to and then uh, spread a little light around that way. Music never stops and we're going to keep making it. And um, We're excited. We got a lot of content coming. We have a lot of yeah. treats for people. That's for sure. We know that Bob wants to join the podcast. You know, this is his favorite thing to do as podcast or to tell stories. <laughs> stories, no matter how the format <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. But getting Bob to tell a story is wonderful. And um, we may have, you know, we, we, we talked about having Koi on from Zach Brown Band and Bob together so that they can tell a story. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be fun. But um, man, this is, it's fun. The uh, From the Factory Podcast Home Edition. Yeah, we like it. Yep. I think maybe we should just stay here and do it this way from now on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, late night music. I'll well, take it however it comes. 
Awesome. Thank you. As long as we can spread a few notes around. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you for your time. Good to see you guys. Thanks, everyone. Good to see you guys. The Taylor Force from the Factory Podcast.